Hello and welcome to For Loop for Assembly Programming for Beginners video. In this video, we will be looking at the following two for loops while using jump and conditional jump. Let's start by looking at this program. In here, we are trying to solve the following for loop first. Under data, we're declaring num1 and num2, which are D words. I have initialized num1 with value 3 and num2 with value 6. I've also declared a variable called loop false as D word and have initialized it with 8. I declared this variable as my control variable since I wanted to see what happens in EAX when my loop goes to false status. I will use this variable in the program to move value x to EAX when my loop's condition becomes false. Next under dot .code is my main program instructions. And here, as you can see, we are moving num1 and num2 to EAX and EBX respectively. And here we're starting our loop. At this point, we are comparing EAX with EBX and as long as our EAX is less than our EBX, we will increment our EAX and repeat the loop. As soon as EAX becomes greater than EBX, in other words, as soon as our num1 becomes greater than num2, we will jump to exit instruction and we will move A to EAX, which will indicate and signals false status. Let's run the program. Okay, so for us to be able to see what goes on in registers, I'm going to start using breakpoints and use the Windows debugger to step through the program. To use breakpoints, all I have to do is just click breakpoint right over here, just click right next to the line. I want the breakpoints to start and that's where the breakpoint is going to start and I'm going to step through the program. So now I'm going to use the Windows um, debugger. And I'm going to be able to see what happens in the registers over here. I'm going to use F11 and we're going to step through the program to see what happens. At this point, in the EAX has the value 3. As we can see, num1 was 3, so that's correct. And now we're going to move to EBX and check out EBX right there. And we're going to move 6 into EBX and now we have 6 in there. Now we're going to start our loop, we're going to compare 3 and 6, and since 3 is less than 6, we're going to um, skip over the exit instruction and we're going to increment our EAX by 1, and now EAX is 4. Since 4 is still less than 6, then we're going to start the loop again, so we're going to go back again from compare EAX and EBX, and we're going to go through the program one more time, and now our EAX is 5. 5 is still less than 6, so we're going to jump up here and we're going to go through the program one more time. And now 6 is in EAX, but 6 is not less than 6. So what's going to happen um, once we run the program, once it compares EAX with EBX, now it's going to jump down over here where our exit instructions are going to be set. So I'm going to go through it one more time and it's gonna execute the exit instruction and right now we're gonna be right over here so um this instruction is now saying that we're gonna be moving eight into our eax so if i do f11 one more time we're gonna be able to see that eight now is in my eax and we're done with this for loop. Now let's use another for loop example where we will be initializing our variables to zero. So to write assembly instructions for this for loop, we're gonna start as usual by declaring our variables. So we have sum and i as our variables. Both of them are D word and we're initializing it with zero. And uh, as you can see, I still have my loop false, which is a D word, and I have initialized it with eight. I just want to have some kind of control and when the loop goes to false status, see what happens. Um, moving on, we're going to be moving sum and i into EAX and EBX respectively. And then we're going to start comparing our EBX with three. Let me change this to reduce confusion. Let me move this. I'm just going to change this to three. It's going to go faster this way. And uh, now we're going to write the exit instruction in case if our loop goes to false status. And then moving on, we're going to be um, 
adding the EAX to EBX, and this is the, the instruction for sum plus equal I, and then if still our I is less than or equal to 3, then we're going to be incrementing the EBX, which is the same thing as our I++ plus plus right there, and then we're going to go back again to the top of the loop, and we're going to repeat this until I is greater than 3. Once I is greater than 3, then we're going to jump into our um, loop false variable, we're going to move that to our EAX, and we're going to be able to see 8 in our EAX, which signals the loop is false. Let's go ahead and run this program. So again, I'm going to be using the breakpoint. I'm going to put it right over here, right next to our EAX, and I'm going to use the Windows debugger to step through this program and see what happens. So at this point, I am moving 0 to EAX, so we're going to use F11, and you can see EAX is 0 now, and we're going to go to EBX. Again, 0 is going to be moved to EBX. So at this point, we're going to see that 0 is less than or equal to 3. So we're going to, after we compare it, we're not going to go to the exit instruction. So we're going to skip over that, and we're going to add uh, EBX to EAX, and we're going to increment the I. So, doing that, we're going to see that EBX is 1 now, and we're going to go at the top of the loop, and we're going to compare that 1 with 3, and since it's less than or equal, then we're going to use our F11, and we're going to step through, and we're going to see that how our EAX and EBX are changing accordingly every time we're going to go through the loop. Now, EBX is 3, so we're comparing it. It is less than or equal to 3, so we can go through this loop one more time. And now EBX is 4, so once we compare it and we see it's 4, then we're going to start executing the exit instructions, which now we're going to jump down here, and we're going to start moving loop false, which is value 8, into EAX. And there it is. Now our EAX has 8, which was our way of signaling the condition is false. And we're done with the program. Since you have learned how to use a loop, up next, let's learn how we can use push and pop stack operations to reverse a string utilizing a loop.